The CNN Frontier says they followed standard procedure. Here to discuss, the president of the Association of Flight Attendants uh, International, Sarah Nelson. Sarah, thanks so much for joining us. I have to say, this is a pretty strange story. How surprised were you when you heard that these kids were taken to a hotel room by an airline employee without getting approval from the parents? Uh, this is a very strange story. Airlines have different policies for unaccompanied minors, but all of those policies across the industry are rooted in clear communication with the parents or guardians and a clear chain of custody of those unaccompanied minors. So the fact that the parents didn't know what was going on and that the <laughs> policy was to take uh, those children to a hotel with one airline employee driven in a private car is a, a very strange circumstance. Yeah, Frontier put out a statement. I want to read it. The children were attended at all times by a Frontier supervisor placed in a hotel room overnight and provided with food. Our records show that the children were in contact with their mother before being transported to the hotel and with their father the following morning before leaving on the continued flight. According to the family, they were called more than an hour after the flight landed and then only because the kids endeavored to use someone else's cell phone. As a parent, it seems to me, you want to know the minute or within minutes of when that flight landed in a different city where your kids are. It's unimaginable that the parents didn't know where their children were. Now, listen, I can't comment on the specifics of this flight because I don't know the, uh, the specifics there. But what we can do is to give some advice to parents who are booking their children as unaccompanied minors. Um, because airlines do have uh, a chain of custody there uh, for those unaccompanied minors in any event. And we have to recognize that the airline industry will have operational disruptions. So to avoid problems, uh, one thing that you want to do is make sure that you're booking your child on the first flight of the day. Mm -hmm. That's going to lessen the amount of operational disruptions. Avoid those red eyes or late night flights because the flights, the lights will be down. It'll be harder for flight attendants to keep track of those um, of those unaccompanied minors. Seat your child close to where ch the flight attendants are most commonly entering and exiting, which is the galley areas, the areas where we're preparing the service, which is typically near the airplane doors. And um, you want to make sure also that as a parent or a guardian, you are planning to have a gate pass to accompany your child to the aircraft and then picking up your child at the aircraft door when they arrive. The flight attendants are charged with maintaining where those unaccompanied minors are, signing them off to another airline employee when we arrive. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a clear chain of custody and there should be clear communication with those parents or guardians. Sure. All the experiences that I've had are being connected to there is a very high bar. There's a lot of things you have to do to get that child on the plane and off the plane. Here, there were these extenuating circumstances where it all broke down. I want you to listen to the father uh, of these children, Shad Gray, what he had to say. I think if they did the best they should or could, they shouldn't have left, left it up to a seven or a nine year old to contact their parents to let them know what was going on and what processes were going to take place. I feel it should never have happened and at least we should have been given the chance to make that decision on whether we wanted them to go to a hotel or stay, you know, in the airport and sleep on a cot. So my understanding is that Delta is the only airline with a strict procedure for if something like this happens. What do you know that airlines are supposed to do here? Well, I, that, that's not true, actually. I've talked with several airlines over the past 24 hours, and they all have clear policies about what to do if there's an extreme circumstance mm -hmm. like this. And in every case, it starts with communication with the parents or guardians. If we're unable to get a hold of them, then a station manager would be making a determination. There are policies that include going to hotels where a security guard from the airport is stationed outside the door all night for those children. If there is um, a airline employee who is in the hotel room with the child, that is with communication with the parents and never less than one. So two always with those unaccompanied minors. These are some of the policies that are contained in airlines across the industry. And there are clear policies for these unforeseen events. Now, they're extremely rare. Sure. It's very difficult to execute on this. And that's why we really encourage parents to do everything they can to book children on flights to avoid this sort of circumstance. Who's supposed to make that phone call? I mean, in this case, it was the children themselves who somehow got a hold of another kid cell phone to make the call. Is it supposed to be the flight attendant? Is it supposed to be a gate agent? Is it supposed to be an 
someone in central command for these airlines? The flight attendant would not normally be the one to make in, be making the call because they would be signing off those children to airport personnel when we're arriving at the destination. It would normally be a station manager or someone in charge at that airport who would be trying to contact the parents or guardians in a situation like this. All right, Sarah Nelson, thanks for helping us understand this. As we said, it's an unusual set of circumstances here, but one that no family wants to find itself in. Absolutely not. Appreciate Thank you for talking about